For your host, nationally recognized yep. certified appraiser Elizabeth Stewart, yep. Santa Barbara's Richard. Treasure Sleuth, will help you I put understand value you on the treasures in your own here. home. Every okay. time it rains, it just rains. Me. Don't worry about it. My audio Patty is from irrelevant. Heaven. It's just so that you can hear me. Don't you know each? I'll just go ahead and take that out. I don't know if that makes any difference or not. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's fine. A little better. Here we go. Three, two, one. You're live. Hello, 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 Santa Barbara. It's your Chantress of everything valuable and beautiful, Elizabeth Stewart. I am celebrating one of my favorite organizations in town, Nomad Tango. And uh, one of the reasons that I wanted to get into this is because there's a, a really cool band or group coming. Uh, and uh, I want to talk with the uh, um, leader of that band. And this is Los Tangueros del Oeste. And I have with us Sasha Jacobson to talk about that. And Alejandra Fulguera, also the founder of Nomad Tango, is here. And surprisingly, um, Mateus Requena is here, who is the owner of Bueno Onda. And this is the restaurant where, uh, by the way, when the World Cup was being aired, in the little restaurant, 400 people crammed themselves in there just to watch <laughs> and be part of the action at the restaurant. And the soccer World Cup, for example, I'm really part of the apartment. It was what? What? What did you say, Matthias? <laughs> it was pretty crammed. Yeah, don't say. <laughs> How did you serve anything? Uh, we didn't really. <laughs> no, we everybody, were just there was, celebrating. <laughs> everybody was too nervous to eat until afterwards. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't think anybody. Yeah, it, it was. Uh, yeah, it was chaos, or uh, you know, organized chaos, just like Buenos Aires, you know. <laughs> I see. Okay, so this is a, a restaurant in town, and will you tell us where it is? And then I want to switch over to Ali real fast because there's a special pr uh, promotion that Ali has for us regarding the restaurant. So tell tell us what, about the restaurant. How long has it been around, Mateus? Yeah. Where is it, et cetera? Yeah, so we've been around for uh, about eight years now, um, mainly doing catering. The restaurant about four years. Uh, we're on uh, Haley and Quarantina, so it's like uh, 700 uh, block of East Haley, um, close to Milpas. And yeah, we've been doing lots of events uh, this past few years with Ale, uh, working with uh, a lot of different tank groups, and you know, just uh, she's bringing amazing talent. Um, I trust her so dearly because she every time she wants me. So I'm just so looking forward to Tangueros del Oeste. Excellent. And then tell me, tell me what your what the promotion is, Ale. Okay, so um, we are uh, super excited to have this band coming. It's a it's a it's a it's Argentine tango, but the musicians are from the U.S. and I particularly love that aspect. It's an amazing, very strong international level band. Tasha here has played with the Chrono Quartet. I mean. They really belong in the really big halls, and uh, they're they're playing tango, <laughs> and they're coming to Santa Barbara to Matias' amazing courtyard. It's a beautiful, magic place. Uh, I have set up a coupon for people listening. Uh, radio R A I D O Radio Capital All Capitals for five dollars off. Uh, so if you're listening to this, uh, you buy the tickets. You go to our website nomatango.org. Nomatango is one word. dot org. And uh, there's a big red button. You can buy tickets it's following that button. And so if you type radio, you get $5 off. And if you buy more than one ticket, you type also two to tango, and that's another $5 off. So you have an incredible, like for $15, you can go have an amazing evening with world international world musicians uh, for just $15, guys. Amazing. Wow. Excellent. Excellent. So are people just go onto the website. Yes. Yes. Correct. Nomatango.org. Yeah, they okay. can also go to our website too, buenaondasb.com, and there's a, uh, also a button at the top that they can buy the tickets. So either way, you can purchase your tickets and reserve your tables if you prefer. Oh, that's very true. Yeah, reserve a table. That's very, that's very true. I want to introduce also uh, Stasha. And Stasha Jacobson is the head or the founder, I should say, of Los Tangueros del Oeste. And I was listening a little, excuse my dog in the background. I was listening a little bit to some of his music. 
And what really intrigued me, and I, I mentioned this to Ali, that I wanted to have him on. He has done the the, the soundtrack to a most amazing film. And it's so evocative and so interesting. And I loved watching it. And I love the music to it. I really love that, Sasha. It's beautiful. And then I have a couple of things to tell you guys about um, Los Tegueros del Oeste. Their first album, Alma Vieja, which is old soul, I found out, was nominated for 2022 Latin Grammys in the category of best tango album. And the band had been around that long. And that's, you know, immediately uh, big news. Um, and then I was joking with Sasha before the show. April 8th, um, Los Tanqueros del Oeste is launching a Kickstarter campaign to fund the recording of their second yeah. album and to make a music video with director Joni Sandoval in Buenos Aires. Now, April 8th is... This Kickstarter starts, and that is, I was saying to Sasha, the day of our big national uh, eclipse. <laughs> so we'll have to see how that Kickstarter, but at any rate, he is going to open the album release concert May 30th in Buenos Aires. And so he's traveling at the end of May to Buenos Aires. Now, uh, we're going to hear in and out of the break some of the music by uh, Sasha. But um, what's interesting to read, Sasha, about uh, the group and some of the people that have reviewed it. I I read a, a, um, a New York Times, or is it known as New York Music Review, um, where it says that uh, the 2021 was the Astor Piazzolla centenary. And... Um, the, the the article starts by saying the combative godfather of Nuevo Tango would probably be asking us right now, why, why aren't you fighting harder? Whatever the case is in your part of the world, the fight for reason and normalcy is growing towards critical mass right now. To inspire, inspire us, we have a vast number of recordings um, which we assembled during the lockdown. One of the most gripping is Los Tangueros de Oeste's new album, Ama Vieja streaming at Spotify. And he goes on to say, it's a transcontinental collaboration by a colorful expert cast of tango musicians helmed by bassist Sasha Jacobson and crooner, Ma Ma I'm going to get this wrong, Manuel Baratrex. This is a gorgeous and cutting edge record. Wow. So what a review. And there's a, a number of other reviews that I was reading last night. But I want to introduce Sasha because not only is he, well, you guys can't see him, I can see him because we're on video. Not only is he very gorgeous, but he's super talented and he has such pedigree. His great, 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 great grandfather was a bassist for the Moscow Opera. So he goes back a long way in his instrument. So Sasha, tell me about how you founded the band. Okay, well, I'm so happy to be here. Thank you so much for having me on. Well, and I do have a connection to Santa Barbara because I used to attend the Music Academy of the West when I was uh, a young man. And actually, my great grandfather also used to teach there. He was a violinist. So so um, that's nice. And I always have a, a great um, memories from from that time. So, no, this band, well, but previously I, I uh, performed with the Argentine tango trio called Trio Garufa. And with that trio, we had uh, Guillermo Garcia, who was an Argentine guitar player, and Adrian Jost was a bandoneon player from Switzerland. And we we had that trio for 15 years, and it was where I learned, you know, everything about that I could about, about tango from playing with those guys and dancing as well, of course. And uh, eventually, I I really wanted to do more of my original music, and I just needed a, a, a vehicle to perform, you know, my my own music. And that's when I founded Los Tangueros de la Oeste. And um, yeah, it was it was in uh, 2019, and uh, it was that's that's how it that's how it started. May I ask, do you still perform um, with the um, Santa Cruz Symphony? No, it's been many years. It's been many years. Um, I actually been living in in Argentina for the last couple of years, 
and I come back to the states, uh, you know, like twice a year to to perform and and uh, tour around a little bit. So that's been my life lately, bouncing between Mendoza, Buenos Aires, and California. And are you in, are you speaking to us from Argentina? No, I'm back in California. I just got back like a couple of days okay. ago. Okay. Okay, so I just want to just brag a little of Sasha's bio. Uh, he's performed uh, with the Santa Cruz Symphony as principal bass and the American Musical Theater in San Jose, section member of the Monterey Symphony, Sarasota Opera, world premiere production of Rita Moreno's Life Without Makeup, Martin Short's Fame Becomes Me, Hugh Jackman's In Performance performance, and recorded the new cast album of A Chorus Line, and has toured the world with his his first group, as he was mentioning, Trio Garufa. He's the founder of the musical Arts Quintet, which performs original work. Strad Magazine says his music is stylish and vigorous, beautifully arranged. And San Francisco Bay Guardian says composer bassist Sasha Jacobson's concoctions hop nimbly through a world of styles while impressing with ear-catching intricacy and handsome technique. They go on to say classical music is sexy again. Wow. And uh, yeah, how how fun is that? And he's collaborated with the Flamenco Theater Company of San Francisco, Tango Fatal, with choreographer Jorge Torres of Forever Tango, the Island Moving Company, San Jose Dance, uh, the Chitra Dust Dance Company with Jason Samuel Smith. And then he has, uh, gosh, taught various classes. He's friends to students. He's uh, taught at the San Francisco School of the Arts, Sacred Hearts College Prep, Oakland School of the Arts, Balboa High School, St. Ignatius Prep, and he teaches private students as well. Very impressive resume. And now mm -hmm. I want to hear a little bit, Sasha, about the band itself. So can you tell us about the members, what they play, et cetera, et cetera? Oh, Richard's giving us a sign. We have to go to a quick break. Let's hold that thought about the band. I want to hear about the band and I want to hear how they perform. So I was looking at some of the older YouTube videos, Sasha, and some of the promotional press material of the past. And every performer in the band has its has his own style of dress. I noticed that. Interesting. Yeah. Yes. And I want to hear more about that, how that personality comes through on stage. You are really intense to watch. You're very really intense, very, very in, you know, mm -hmm. in into the performance, uh, like very much focused. Uh, yeah. Notice that about you. But anyway, Richard, let's go to quick break. Um, and then I just want to give a shout out. Ali, will you tell us the performance? is going to be when, and tell us a little bit, uh, remind us about the coupon. Uh, the performance is Thursday, April 18th uh, at Buena Onda. And you can get tickets if you go to our website, uh, nomadtango.org. Uh, there's a red button there to get to the, to the ticket page. Um, you have... Uh, a fantastic tango band coming. There's going to be a dance floor. People are going to be dancing. There's going to be food by Buena Onda, which is amazing. Um, the cover is, uh, you can get uh, tickets with a coupon discount of um, radio, R-I, <laughs> I can't spell, <laughs> radio, all caps, and Tutu Tango if you buy two or more tickets for a total of $10 off. So for $15, you can get tickets to this. And we also have joining us uh, to talk a little bit about the performance, Mateus Requena, who is the owner of the restaurant where the performance is going to take place. And Ali wrote me this morning um, that she considers it the friendliest place in Santa Barbara, the restaurant itself, Buena Onda, and that's in, in the, right off of Haley. Literally, let's go to a quick break. When we get back from the break, I want to hear a little bit about the boys in the band. Uh, their personalities, what they play, how they dress, how they perform, how Sasha met them. So we're going to hear all about that. And the, there's quite a few members, too. Yeah. Okay, don't turn that down. Back in a minute with Los Tangueros del Oeste. And you're clear.
right. <laughs> bueno, a ver, hay que clarificar acá, ¿no? El tema de las dos bandas. <laughs> By the way, I, I understand that uh, there are some rather notorious individuals who uh, end up uh, going to and and hiding in, in, in Argentina. You're not going there to hide, are you, Sasha? Of course I am. What do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> and and I see what I don't understand is why Argentina? Well, I, I've never I, understood that. Well, <laughs> it's, you know, it's, I mean, that's what happened in, in, in my life. And I say to people that music can change your life or even one song can change your life. When I heard Astro Piazzolla, I had already been playing, you know, jazz and Latin jazz and all this stuff. But I just, I turned into tango very hard. And then, of course, I married an Argentine woman and now I live in Argentina. So I'm just saying, you know, a little bit of music in the right moment can can change the direction of your life. Oh, so, yeah, well, I can I can certainly attest to that. Yeah, exactly. I've only written one song. Um, but I've had some rather profound experiences with it. And so music can, uh, it ain't, it doesn't just soothe the savage breast. Uh, it, it goes way beyond that as well. It can give you happy feet. <laughs> <laughs> so, so Sasha, do you prefer Argentina to, to California? Oh, that's such a tough question. Um, yeah, I imagine. I, I mean, Buenos Aires is a magical city. It's a, so much energy. I think of it like New York. It's full of people, full of life, full of energy, uh, full of excitement and danger and all those things. So um, I, it's my I, uh, Buenos Aires is my favorite city in the world. Uh, and it's the Mecca of tango. So if you're a tango dancer or a musician, there's no other place to be. And people are constantly coming from around the world. So it's when you go to a tango event there, it's just very international. Just people from all over the world, Europe, all over South America and Asia and coming together. And and really the the, the Argentines are so welcoming and they they're proud of the art form for me is is you know the national art form of Argentina. I don't know how you guys feel are the Argentines here, mm. but but uh, <laughs> but there's some but people are welcoming. They don't say, "Oh, you're a you're a tourist, go away." No, to they 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 see that we love the art form, and then they appreciate that. So it's okay. It's, well, let's have some more appreciation, Elizabeth. Coming back in three, two, one. You are live. Welcome back. It's Elizabeth Stewart, and I'm speaking with uh, Sasha Jacobson, who's the founder of Los Tinkeros Del. They're coming on April the 18th to give us a performance at Buena Onda restaurant in the neighborhood of Haley Street here in Santa Barbara. Mateus Riquena is here, the owner, founder of the restaurant. Um, and, you know, we were mentioning that uh, Ale Folgera is also here, founder of Nomad Tango. And every so often I check in with Ali because he's always bringing like world-class, you know, very famous people to little Santa Barbara. And that's fantastic. And Los Pinteros del Oeste is one of them. Um, the Latin Grammy uh, nominated 2022 Latin Grammy Best Tango Album. How cool is that? So that group is coming and I wanted Sasha to tell us a little bit about the the, the boys in the band. Um, so let's start off with the singer, Sasha. Tell me. So yeah, his, so his name's Manuel Berta Reiks, actually Manu, um, and he is a porteño, means he's from Buenos Aires. And we actually, this is a great story. So we, I was with my son in a place in Berkeley, California, called Cafe Buenos Aires, and we were having a coffee and empanadas sitting at this cafe and in walk these two guys and i look at them and i said these guys look like porteños you know they look like argentine guys so we struck up a conversation and he said well and he said i'm a tango singer i said what are you serious and so i said i have a concert in two days come and sit in with us come sing sing some tangos with us and he did and i invited him for another concert after that and then he went back to Argentina, but we kept in touch. And when I started 
writing this music, I contacted him and said, "Hey, can you can you write the lyrics?" And and he did. And he's a he's an amazing lyricist and and singer. And right now we're in the middle of of working on the second album, uh, which which just has uh, lyrics all in in Castellano or you know Argentine Spanish. And um, yeah, so that's that's how we met, and we've formed this amazing partnership since since then. It's working from afar often, but um, but it's working out. So you know, it's so odd those things in life. Richard, it's, I mean, just listening to that story. So all these things had to line up. So they had to be in that cafe. The son had to be quiet and having a cup of coffee with his dad. They had to, and, and Sasha had to recognize by something about the appearance of these two guys that they were Argentinian and from Buenos Aires. And then strangely enough that, this is a rare tango singer that all those things had to line up so that this world-class partnership could happen. I, I call say? that, I call that coincidences. <laughs> is there such Not a coincidences, thing? coincidences. <laughs> ah, I see. I see what you're saying. Okay. So Sasha, tell me more about the singer. Um, so, well, okay. So let's see, um, what can I say about him? Mainly that, that, um, he is, he not just sings tango, but he also sings like all the Argentines love rock and they have, they love American rock and roll. They love the Argentine uh, rock national, but I think in Argentina, they love rock and roll more than tango actually. Yeah, a lot of people, but, but he, so he also sings that. And, and I think that helps, you know, in our music, it's, it's modern, what I consider modern tango, it's, it's tango and we love traditional tango and we're going to play also traditional tango in Santa Barbara, um, mixed in with some of our original uh, tango nuevo and, and electro tango, um, which I always try to keep uh, for dancing everything you know uh, because i dance tango as well and so all my music i want people to dance to it and um yeah so i i think that's that's the most important thing is just the respect for the art form but also keeping it alive and growing and breathing is important and i just we just performed um in february we performed at the electro tango festival of buenos aires alongside groups like Tangueto, Otros Aires, and Orquesta Tangore. And that's where I met Alejandra, who yeah. is so full of energy and, and wow. I mean, she is, you know, bringing us to Santa Barbara in, is amazing. She's amazing. And the Nomad Tango organization is amazing. So I want to thank them and and thank her for, for bringing us because she, you know, I she brought all these people from Santa Barbara down to Buenos Aires. And, and <laughs> so then, you know, when I ran into them there, they were, you know, they were just also full of life and energy. And, and so that's how it worked out again, another uh, moment of kismet or coincidences where, where we just met and started talking. And then she's like, come to Santa Barbara. I'm like, okay, I'll do it. You know, Sasha, Elizabeth has met Max from Tangueto. Uh, ah, yeah, yeah. Pablo Slan. Ah, okay. And El Cachivache. Ah, okay. okay. Uh, yes. So she knows very well what we are. Yeah. I, I one, I imagine love, this, Elizabeth. Love... One room with all those people at the same time. It's like explosive and more, right? <laughs> I can only imagine. Okay, so tell me more. Now, okay, the other the other people in the band, Sasha. Yeah, Um. so we have like, um. it's a very international band, actually. Um. Our violinist is from Puerto Rico. And he now lives in, in Buenos Aires, Ishtar Hernandez. And Ishtar is such a unique name. I guess his parent, he told me his parents just liked the movie Ishtar. It's not, it's certainly not anything close to a traditional name in Puerto Rico. But um, Ishtar is a real character. And then uh, we have uh, Carlos Caminos from Venezuela. And his dad is actually uh, Argentine, but they, but he grew up all in Venezuela. Now he lives in California. And um, we have also other Argentines um, on piano is um, for the first album was Pablo Estigarribia. And he's 
a grand latin grammy winner uh himself and um, one of the top piano players in the world uh tango piano players and and he plays for instance with really the the living legend on bandoneon uh, victor lavagen who is sort of one of the last remaining um titans from the from the major eras of tango he's like in his late 80s but still playing amazingly um and teaching and touring and all this stuff um that's uh, victor lavagen he played with pugliese and, and was one of the great masters of tango so he's like the connection back to direct connection back to the past that all the tango musicians in buenos aires you know want to learn from him and and see him and hear him play and so it's it's great to have all those those connections to to the past and to the the really huge names in tango like like Pugliese. I'm going to ask a question. I don't know if this is too, too personal, but um, I was reading another review of your band, and it said that there was a specific song, Milonga de los Muertos, uh, was a requiem for your grandmother who you lost on the day of the dead in 2019 and i want to know how you know that is an inspiration for you to compose uh tell me more about that how are you inspired to compose you know it's yeah that's a it's an interesting question and this in this case it really sometimes it just comes out and i'll sit down usually at the piano but could be at the guitar and just start playing and or thinking of ideas or it, I don't know in this case that song just it just came out I really couldn't explain it and it's so funny because when I'm composing and I'm really concentrated and 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 focused and just working on it working on the ideas and then the song comes but afterwards if you said well how did you do that I I really couldn't tell you I don't know where it came from and I didn't really know how I did it it just happens. <laughs> Music is sort of mysterious in that way. Um, I I think of art. I think of art as it's just an expression of the infinite. So there's infinite possibilities in art and in the universe. But you have to pull something out and make it concrete. You have to make it finite. So a song, you know, there's twelve notes, and you can use any note you want. But you have to pull certain notes and certain rhythms and make them fixed or finite to to make a composition and so i don't know that's how i that's how i think of it so uh, I, 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 before we get, have to go to break i want to tell uh, sasha a quick story so my mother um is a, she's still around and she is in her late 90s and up till her well up till a couple of birthdays ago He's continued to perform. She's a pianist. Oh and um, yeah, and she performed and accompanied, you know, we're from Chicago. So we were always at the lyric because um, she she would she would accompany some of the, the, the singers there, et cetera. And my mom have, has a perfect pitch. And over the years, the pitch and she can hear it's so interesting it's declined in gradients. So now she's like, okay, if she's like, if we're, we're doing a Messiah sing-along, she's looking at the score, but she's got to adjust her voice a quarter tone mm. because she knows she slipped a quarter tone in, in, uh, in her pitch. It's amazing. Now you take that same talent and I remember she was performing a suite for two hands and she was doing Bizet, Carmen. And she asked me to come and turn pages for the performance. This was years ago. I play, but nothing like my mom. And um, my pitch is only relative. And so I said, okay, I would come and turn pages. And she was in dress rehearsal with her um, partner. And both women had this amazing technical skill. But my mom was saying, you know, I just not, I'm not feeling this. I'm just not feeling this. And um, she she she's so technically gifted that sometimes the emotion part is blocked by that high technicality. 
And I just didn't know what, what to tell her what to do. I, I ran out to the garden. I, I picked some roses and I said, stick one in between your teeth and play Carmen. <laughs> <laughs> you know, to get get some emotion going, but yeah, but yeah, but you know what I'm saying. The technical side is so very, very strong that you know she had to remind herself occasionally throughout her performing career to pull that emotion forward. And that's why I was saying when I was watching you on the YouTube. That is so evident in you, the emotional part, and obviously you've got the technical skill, but the emotional level that you bring. It's it's palatable. palatable. I mean, you can see it on the YouTube performances. Very, it's that, very cool. Thank you, thank you. I think that's what drew me into tango because it's all about the the emotion and the passion. And and when you're playing or dancing, it's that's the most important thing is to to portray your your emotion, to put yourself into it, and to to give it that that feeling you know they we talk about the tango feeling when you're playing tango you know you can't just read the notes that are on the page that's nothing that's not the tango is not mm -hmm. there and and you have to learn if you're learning how to perform tango music you have to learn to interpret what's if if it's written because because they don't write you can't write what it is you 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 can't you can't be written you have to bring into it that that tango feeling and 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 we talk always in dancing about the musicality which is like how you interpret the music you know yeah everybody can do the steps or whatever but but you have to again bring the musicality and the like you said the emotion and that is the most important in tango it really is it's interesting because um at, at world piano day was uh just happened it's in the 88th day of the year because there's 88 keys, you know, on the piano. So I always listen to Deutsche Grammophon always does a beautiful compilation of the young talent, the pianist, the young talented pianist. Listen, listen to that. And it's so interesting because some of the, the, the performers are playing things that I could play. They're simple, in my opinion, but they're world-class interpreters. Mm, yeah of the most simple things. And you wouldn't think that, you know, you'd bring to the stage your simplest performance, but it's a showcase because you're showing, I think, because it is, you know, it's a, it's attended your huge theaters full of people. You're showing, even though this is the simplest piece in my repertoire, this is the depth I can call from it. Yeah, mm. absolutely. Yeah. Richard, let's go to a quick break. I want to speak with Matthias. I wonder if Matthias is a composer of food. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. I mean, I that's kind of you know how the business started. Um, yeah, you know, making food at home, and uh, yeah, it's always been like a passion of ours. You know, uh, bringing bringing the culture to Santa Barbara, the food culture to Santa Barbara. Um, you know, representing well, so. Yeah, for me, uh, it's been a let's really, let's talk uh, talk about that. I want to talk about the menu, how you choose it, et cetera, et cetera. When we get back from the break, a little bit. Yeah. yeah. Okay, Richard, let's go to a quick break. We're back. I'm reintroducing April the 18th. Los Tangueros del Oeste is coming to our own restaurant here in Buena Onda, which is in the Haley area of town, and we've got the owner of the restaurant here with us today, Mateus Rukaina. When we get back from the break, Mateus is going to tell us a little bit about how he chooses his menu. Don't turn that down. All right, you are, you are clear. <laughs> what do you guys? What do you guys serve, Mateus? You have like a. Like what you, you guys have like anything like locro or anything like that or uh locro. No, <laughs> yeah. I mean we're trying to figure out we may do like a special, you know, event where we actually gonna you know, like do maybe locro with empanadas, you know, or maybe like even an asado. Um, but yeah, normally we just do mainly empanada. Like our thing has been empanadas, the best empanadas. I mean, it's like you know, from scratch, uh dough. Uh so you know, they, they really stand out, I think. Uh, freshly baked and then uh we've added uh you know in this past few years we've added like other classic argentine dishes like milanesas and uh pizzas you know like uh, fugacetas and yeah, yeah and then things to complement it so it's a pretty simple menu but you know it's made with a lot of uh you know love and you know i think it, it shows into the food and yeah 
I mean, empanadas are so good. You can survive just on that for. Yeah. 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 And, <laughs> I mean, the whole, you know, the whole point of bringing it was because we missed him so much. You know, when we moved here, we, those, there's not really a lot of good places. You had to go to LA and they were not that good. And I just remember being like, well, what's going on? Why can't someone just bring this to Santa Barbara? And I was like, well, we have some good recipes. I'll try it. <laughs> That's were you a chef before that? No, not really. It's been like, just, you know, I just learned the trade, but um, yeah, we have fun. And um, I have a, a, a my assistant, my chef, you know, assistant, um, she is, she's like so talented too. And like, she's able to, you know, we come up with a recipe and she multiplies it and, you know, makes it, you know, so we can serve thousands of people. You know? Where, where are you, where, what part of Argentina are you from? Uh, Mar del Plata. Mar del Plata. Oh, okay. Uh -huh. okay. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, beach town. That's how Things that's like how that started. Just you know, typical Argentinian. You know, like in when in Mar del Plata, that's all you. That's what you say. Bueno, you know. Yeah, <laughs> know. That's what it was born. I was at least I want to believe that. I think they just had the La Plata Baila Tango uh, festival. Oh wow! That's oh, really? amazing. Huge. It's a huge. huge festival. A tango like a mosh pit, like a thousand people. Wow. I haven't and I been. I saw the photos. Like amazing. Oh. I I got a video of uh, from last year, not this year. I don't know, but everybody's singing like like in the cancha, Matias. Like the tango, like uh, you know, like everybody jumping and and humming the tango with the bands. Like if this was. To... We should try that on on, on Thursday. <laughs> oh, we should totally, totally should do that. You're right. It's yeah. so amazing to see. Like this is, uh, you know, like a limno. You know, like a, like a. Anthem. Yeah. It's incredible. 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 I mean, yeah, I'm yeah. I'll I'll try to find that video because it's I'm looking forward to see I'm oh, looking look forward to seeing Dasha guys play. I have not <laughs> met your dog yet, Elizabeth. Look at that. Oh is he cold. Is that why he got his sweater? <laughs> well, you are cold too, I can see. Oh mm. my goodness. He's a gaucho. <laughs> oh, Elizabeth always has very special dogs. <laughs> took her by surprise with her with his youth. <laughs> okay, we are coming back in three, two, one. You are live. Hello. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Alejandra, the host. Welcome back. It's Elizabeth Stewart, and I'm speaking with my friend. Alejandra Guevara, and we're talking about Nomad Tango, her wonderful organization that brings such amazing talent to Santa Barbara. And we have coming on April 18th, Los Tangueros del Oeste, coming to Buena Onda. And Mateos Requena is here, who's the founder of the restaurant. Started by catering about eight years ago, four years ago, opened a full-on restaurant. And I want to know what Mateus has on the menu, how he selects it, what his day is like. Tell me, Mateus, how do you run the restaurant? Yeah, so, you know, uh, it's always been like, just like one little step at a time. We uh, we started just making empanadas. We wanted to bring the authenticity of, of, you know, like the most, I think that it's like the one of the top foods in Argentina and we missed it so much. And um, we had some really good recipes and, um, you know, we started with just our Argentinian friends here in town. And uh, um, over time, <clears throat> you know, we like people started really uh, praising the food, the quality. And um, yeah, I think like uh, we started with the pop up, then the catering. Um, and then about four or five years ago, we decided to kind of add on to the menu, do more things um, and and keep, you know, we wanted to always keep the Argentinian uh, uh, culture in it. That that was super important for us to like share that. So that we wanted to bring the authentic dishes like uh, milanesas, which is like uh, thinly cut breaded steak, fried. Um, you know, you can serve in many ways. Um, also pizzas. There's a lot of Italian influence in Argentina, so we have pizzas, pastas, um, and uh, yeah, there's so much more coming to the menu. We're just, you know, it's simple food done uh, done well. You know, with a lot of love. So. Yeah. And if I may say, uh, they have a, I, I mean, when I first started going, it was a kitchen. Then there was a couple of chairs outside. And now that whole uh, parking lot is, uh, when we take it over with tango, it be, and, and other things, because he does other cultural, uh, he's very humble, but there's a lot of cultural 
you know, uh, uh, energy around that place. But it's a beautiful courtyard. I don't know if it was your sister or your mom, because it's a family thing. They, they have mm -hmm. talent in the whole family. And it becomes a very romantic place with little lights to the point that the people that I bring, you know, they, they play all over the world. I mean, when they come here, they've been in 50 cities in Europe and, you know, all over the U.S., and they keep telling me the one place they always want to come back is that courtyard of Matias <laughs> with the little yeah. romantic lights. It's a very special place, uh, very, very special yeah. place. Yeah, I think we try to, you know, uh, bring a little bit of Buenos Aires to it and, and a little magic to it. And it feels like that courtyard, you know, transforms. And it was just a parking lot, you know, a, f a few years ago. And now it's just, you know, it's a courtyard. It feels, you know, like you're, you step in, in a different place, you know, once you like walk in there. Um, a lot of people, that's what they tell us, like, wow, I, you know, this is magical. And at nighttime, it really comes alive. And uh, the musicians do uh, love the spot. So it's it's always nice to be able to host, uh, you know, the scale. Do, do you, you know, it, Ali mentioned that it's a family matter? Yeah. So we started this, um, my wife, my mom and I started this uh, from home, you know, just making food and just empanadas, like I said. And uh and it's so uh, you know so it's always been like supported by the family. Uh, my brother helped me, my sisters, um, you know, even my dad at some point. Uh, so yeah, throughout the years, especially at the beginning of of the of the business. Um, now it is you know they're not as as involved as much, but my wife is and she helps me with social media. And my little my girls, I have two girls, and they come and like you know clean the tables, you know, and they'll like they eventually will be serving there soon. You know, one is only four, so <laughs> but she will be. There soon. <laughs> She's already wiping tables. <laughs> How old? Four. Oh my gosh! No, All worry, right, Sash. Child labor. It's just they're having fun. <laughs> no, no, no. Sasha, does does your does your boy do do anything with music? Yeah, well, um, he does actually. He plays bandoneon, which uh, which is the really the instrument of tango and kind of the national instrument of Argentina. And he, um, so my my wife's um, great uncle uh, played the bandoneon, and we inherited this instrument. It's uh, it's a doble A, which is the best kind of bandoneon, and and um, we got it, you know, just from the family and. Um, yeah, my son is, and I have a daughter too, and she plays piano and, and various other instruments. So we, in fact, right before I left, because they live in Mendoza, and we were playing um, all together the night before I left, um, playing music all together, which, you know, I, for me, is very special to be able to do. And playing like milongas and, and things like that. So my son is actually getting really good, and he's had some lessons with some of the maestros from Buenos Aires. Um, so, yeah, I'm very proud. Mm -hmm. We had the most amazing opportunity um, on the show to, to interview a gentleman that was an expert har a maestro of the harmonica. Remember, Ale? And yes. he made his, his... Joe Powers. Joe, Joe Powers. Joe, 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 sure, a friend of mine, yeah. And the way he played, he almost was mimicking that instrument, wasn't he, Sasha? Absolutely, yeah. the The harmonica tradition in bueno in Argentina is is like uh, well, also in in folklore music, but but it's it is it's like the bandoneon sound and style, and the instruments are actually related because they're both reed instruments. So a bandoneon is just kind of like a giant harmonica in some ways that you don't have to blow into. It has the bellows instead of the you know instead of blowing into it directly. I have to tell you about uh, the little a little aside about Joe. So he was on the show and he he performed on the show as well. And he performed, you know, with Ali's group um, as well, No Man Tango, and came and brought a beautiful concert to Santa Barbara. A couple of months later, I was involved, you know, I'm an appraiser. A couple of months later, I was involved in a lawsuit where gentlemen lost his harmonica shop to one of our fires. Ooh. And um, and I was I was hired to appraise the contents of his shop. He had 300 harmonicas and he also custom made harmonicas so that, you know, if somebody wanted a certain register, a certain sound, et cetera, et cetera. He, he, he had his custom shop. I didn't know the first thing. And this was, you know, I'm supposed to find an expert so I can speak wisely in court about this loss. Mm. And I I called Joe. 
And I said, Joe, you, do you remember me? And he said, yeah. And I, I told him this, this story. And I, I said, <laughs> I have to make it such that the court understands that it's a real instrument. Because mm -hmm. it's usually a throwaway. It's not a concert instrument. It's mm -hmm. not a, you know, you're not a first, you're not a concert master playing harmonica. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> I had to say, this is the relevance and why we're putting a high value on it, because it is a, a really legitimate instrument. And Joe knew all these performers, and he just went through this whole big list of performers that he had performed with or studied with. Mm -hmm. And none, the, you know, some of some of the greats, Bob Dylan, for example. I mean, you know, and we we would we we talked about that. Oh, Richard's giving us a sign. We have to go to quick break. But yeah, it's been really enriching to know Ale and and her musicians and her performers that come to Santa Barbara through Nomad Tango. And I want to switch back when we get back from the break, Mateus. You never told us what's on the menu, so I want to I want to know more about that when we get back from the break. Don't turn that down. We are celebrating those. Tangueros del Oeste coming to Santa Barbara on April the 18th to Buena Onda, wonderful restaurant that Ali is telling me has a very friendly vibe and a beautiful romantic courtyard where you can watch the band and see people dance the tango. How cool is that? Little piece of Argentina right here. Don't turn that down back in a minute. Mm -hmm. Ay, Matia, me acaba and de you're clear. Me acaban de mandar el menú de, 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 de Malbec. Te lo mando así. Dale, dale. <laughs> vale. Yeah, I think we should, I wonder if we should uh, maybe talk a little bit about the, yeah, like let's focus on the on the event so that way people can, because I think we have like, what, 10, maybe 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. So we should talk a little bit about that. And um, right mm -hmm. now what people know, like, let's just spread the word. By the way, I think, are you, so you said the clips is on uh, April 8th and, uh, and I think that's the empanada day, by the way. So that's another. Place. No, it's ¿En empanada. Serio? There's a. Hey, yes. ah. is, that fe, is, that a, is that feriado in Argentina? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Está abierto buena is... onda. Está abierto buena onda el lunes. No, eh, no, pues es el lunes justo. Oh. Pero. <laughs> but we'll do empanada week. <laughs> empanada week, okay. Yeah, did you hear that, Elizabeth? No, what did he say? Oh, I just say that uh, April 8th is also Empanada Day, which is the, the eclipse, you know? So we, what a coincidence, you know? Uh, uh, worldwide, is it Worldwide Empanada Day? I think so, I don't know. <laughs> 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 if it is Argentina. There we go, they, they're all coming together, you know? <laughs> That's right. Co co what did Richard say? Co coincidences, but he said it in a different way. Yeah. Richard? Oh, he's gone. <laughs> oh no! It's, a, it's such a new uh, oh, coincidence. He said coincidence. Coincidence. That's right. <laughs> and Sasha, did you meet your wife in Argentina? Uh, we met here. She she um she was living here in, um already, but we met in in tango. Um, yeah, just dancing and um, you know that that's yeah. I uh, I start as soon as I the, after my first performance at a milonga, I decided instantly to have that I have to learn how to dance tango because I I just knew I I knew that uh it was for me so, so I, it's it's not easy you know you have to really study the dance and you know it took took a lot of years but uh I was determined to to do it uh, that's what you need and though a master intention and discipline all yeah. of that it takes for tango <laughs> like just like any instrument right yeah, exactly. That's Ravi Shankar's recipe. <laughs> Mateus, did you did you did the restaurant do okay through through uh, COVID? Uh yeah, yeah. I mean, it was you know first like the first like few months it was a little hard, but we ended up doing frozen food to go, frozen empanadas, uh, which we had never done before, and that became like our number one seller for you know I think through twenty twenty. Yeah. So that, that really, but it's like, we also had like, our, uh, the bars were, uh, were required to sell food in, here in California. And because of that, they were reaching out to us to buy empanadas and sell them at their uh, bars. And that really also kept us going. Yeah. That is interesting that I never thought about that angle, but yeah, 
Mm-hmm. And oh, do do you also have have a wine from South America or it's yeah. Argentina? Yeah, our, our wine list is mostly from Argentina. I would say um, there's a few California wines, but yeah, mostly from Argentina. Okay, this is the final segment, and you have four minutes. Four minutes in three, two, one. You are live. Welcome back. And like I said, this has been such an interesting hour because I'm speaking with. Three Argentinian folks here. I've got um, Sasha with me. Sasha Jacobson is with his band Los Tegueros del Oeste coming to uh, Mateos Requena's restaurant, Buena Onda, on April the 18th. And I have also Alejandra Foguera, the founder of Nomad Tango, local organization bringing tango to Santa Barbara. And Matthias, would you help us in the hour? Tell tell us what's on your menu. Yeah, so we're you know we're usually doing classic Argentinian dishes, um, and we have the empanadas, of course, uh, milanesas, pizzas, um, salads. But then for this event specifically, we're coming up with a a, a preset menu. Not that you have to do it; you don't have to choose to do that. But we're going to offer uh, something a little different. Uh, we've never done it before. People can reserve their tables. Um, uh, they can choose to be, you know, front row watching Sasha and the great musicians. And uh, so we'll have uh, probably like three little surprises. Uh, we're going to do uh, a fish, a salmon dish. We'll have a meat dish and then we'll have um, and then we're going to do a vegetarian uh, as well. So we'll have three options in addition to everything that we offer currently. Um, so people can choose and yeah, it'll be a magical evening. I have to ask, what's your most popular dish? Uh, I mean, probably the empanadas right now, but, uh, but, you know, followed closely by, uh, milanesas, I would say. And what is that? Uh, so it's like a, th- it's, it's a classic dish, uh, it's thinly cut steak. Uh, it's breaded and fried, and then it's served in many ways. You can do it like a sandwich. You can do it just on the plate with a couple of di- side dish side, um, or you can do it, uh, milanesa la bonitana, which is the steak with tomato sauce, mozzarella, uh, sliced tomatoes. Yeah, so it's almost like a pizza and milanesa combined. <laughs> Gosh, and, you're and smiling. Malbec, you're going to have the Malbec? Yeah, we'll have Malbec wines. Yeah, great selection of wines too. Um, and uh, yeah, some a few California wines too, but mostly Argentinian. And, you and know, you know Ma- 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 Matias has opened recently, uh, uh, created a bar uh, which is a, a recent, relatively new thing where he started mixing and exploring. The, are you going to have any special drinks for us? Like, I don't know. Yeah, we'll, yeah, we'll have the bar open that evening. Uh, we'll usually do, we just, we just have a beer and wine license. So we do cocktails based off of that. Uh, so we'll have, you know, like different spritz, uh, some made with uh, Isidro Saki, which is a, a different type of wine. Um, so yeah, we'll do like nice little cocktails, um, uh, wine base, and then, um, our selection of wine and beer. That's what we have. Kilmes. So April 18th. And if you go online, Nomad Tango, you get a discount. People listening can get tickets for $15 to listen to, uh, Los Tangueros del Oeste. And you go online to Nomad Tango to reserve your table at Buena Onda and also get tickets for the event. Very inexpensive. And how fun is that? Thank you, Sasha. Thank you, Mateus and Ale. Thank you. Look forward to the performance on the 18th of April. And thank you, Ale, for bringing all these wonderful musicians to my attention and to Santa Barbara as well. Thank you, Elizabeth, always for supporting us. All right, guys. Yeah. Bye. Thank you. you. Bye. Bye, guys. See you soon. Ciao, Mateus. Ciao, Ciao, Sasha. Thank you, Elizabeth. Okay, you're clear. Thank you, Elizabeth. Thank you guys for for having us. And... <laughs> yeah, thank you. Well, indeed, yeah, it's wonderful. And, and I've really, made, like I say, I've so many interesting people. And like the opportunity to interview jo- Joe about this, uh, the loss. And the guy was like, I I had to play the 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 guy who lost the harmonica shop. I I played him Joe's some of Joe's performances, and he was blown away. Ah. He's like, I didn't know what your harmonic could sound like that, you know, because it's, it's very unique to to use that instrument in that way, I think. Anyway, that's what my guy thought, my well, old guy who lost okay. his shop. All right, guys, thanks. Thank you, Elizabeth. Hey. Bye. Gracias, chicos.
Gracias. Okay, chao, Wesio. Nos vemos pronto. Nos vemos, eh, sí. Vos y yo el 17, ¿no? En Malbec. Eh, sí, sí, en el Malbec. Vale. <risa> chao, Torito. Ah, para, para, Sasha, antes que te vayas. Eh, voy a tener que pedirte que hables con Gary. Eh, ah, ¿Quién es el de sonido? Te voy a mandar el. el ah, sí, el claro. Ah. ¿Tenés un número local para llamarlo? ¿Es un landline? Eh, ah. O si no, pedile a alguien. No, no, este. pero sí, puedo llamar a un landline, sí, con. Sí, sí tengo Google, un Google Phone. Eso, sí, está bien. eso. Eh, y de, si no lo encontrás, déjale mensaje, ve lo que quieres saber, es escuchar del músico, cómo, qué, qué llevan, qué... porque me pasó una vez que vino Hugo Satorre eh, sí. y me dijo, trae una orquesta, y yo no, me, yo no sabía cuánta gente, y no había manera de coordinar, y cuando cayeron eran 12 músicos los, la orquesta, yo no me había imaginado 4 o 6, ¿entendés? Cari casi <risa> se muere, no te puedo explicar, un ataque al corazón, no, lo, no, no sabes lo que fue, un, y después de ahí no me cree más y quería hablar directamente con el músico. Y no, no, hay, no hay piano, no hay piano en. El... No, hay que llevar electrónico. No. Este, okay. Si querés, se puede alquilar uno, pero me, lo hice no, una vez. Ella va, va a llevar eh, el, el teclado. El mi hermano, mi hermano, mi hijo tiene un Roland, creo que te puedo sacar una foto a ver si le sirve. Eh, no, 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 ella. Si no. le lleva el de no, mejor, gracias, más cómodo de ella. Este, buenísimo, buenísimo. Sí, me, mi experiencia con el. Con el piano lo llevé y, y al final mi hermano se quejó igual. Porque <risa> no sé qué la tecla, no sé qué, no, no. Ay, ¿viste? no, no, no. Entonces mejor llevar el electro. El electro. Pero bueno, entonces este, le, le, le pas, te paso el número, le dejas el mensaje, quiénes okay. son, qué llevan, qué necesitan. Perfecto, perfecto. Ok. Gracias, querido. Okay. Seguimos charlando. <risa> Chao. Chao. Thank you, Richard. Thank you. Richard. You're the best. Ok. Chao. Bye. Bye. Bye.